It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. Conservative governments of Latin America gathered in Santiago, Chile last Friday. Presidents and representatives from Chile, Colombia, Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Argentina, Paraguay, and Guyana signed a joint declaration in favor of creating, quote, a regional space of cooperation and coordination without exclusion of ideologies. Actually, the government of Ecuador claims to be center-left, but President Lenin Moreno has been steadily moving his government to the neoliberal right since his election in mid-2017. Back then, he ran as the successor to former President Rafael Correa, who once was part of Latin America's so-called Pink Tide governments, and allied himself closely with other leftists in the region, such as Venezuela's Hugo Chavez, Brazil's Lula da Silva, and Bolivia's Evo Morales. This past weekend, though, President Moreno's rightward drift was put to the test when the country voted in local elections. The vote, however, seems to have been marred with suspicions of fraud when a power outage delayed the vote count. Joining me now to discuss the most recent developments in Ecuador is Tim Schutzhofer. Tim is a political scientist who recently completed a doctoral uh, thesis at Kassel University studying Ecuador's economic development. Also, he recently wrote an article for the publication NACLA titled Elected Left Governing Right. Thanks for joining us today, Tim. Yeah, uh, nice to be here. So let's start with Lenin Moreno's uh, rightward shift. As I mentioned, he originally got elected by a fairly narrow margin as the successor to Rafael Correa and promised to continue Correa's legacy and move it forward. However, once he got into office, he immediately turned against Correa, claiming that Correa had left behind an economic disaster. Uh, he also allowed his vice president, Jorge Glass, who is one of Correa's best friends, to be arrested and reversed various other policies. Tell us some more. What kinds of policies has Moreno pursued since then uh, that show this rightward shift? Um, yes, I think that um, he has um, pursued several uh, policies which uh, show this uh, right-wing shift. First of all, he has... Uh, done a great effort in order to um, dismantle all the institutions that have been built during the um, during the Korea administration during the so-called citizens revolution um, he has basically um, used the same framing as the right-wing parties uh, which is to uh, claim that the public sector does not work that the public sector is obese that there are too much um, that there's uh, too much public debt which is of course a framing um, meant to um, to justify right-wing neoliberal policies like um, giving um, like privatizations uh, which have not um, been done so far but uh, which are on the way um, tax breaks for um, the wealthy um, and um, of course also shift in who is in the main positions of power for example the new vice president is now um, Otto Sonnenholzner who is um, also related to elite sectors of the country. And of course, the Minister of Finance and the Economy is now the former um, representative, the former president of the Employers Association. So there's, these are, I think, clear indications of a shift to the right. Now, another thing that happened uh, recently, I think last week, is uh, that Moreno also signed an agreement with, well, actually it was a little bit further back than last week, but earlier this month, an agreement with the IMF for something like $10 billion. Can you tell us a little bit about this and why they did that and, and what this means for uh, the economic yeah. policy? Um, yes. Um, it's, of course, as, um, as usual, usual in, um, in the Moreno administration, all not very transparent. Um, the Moreno administration has um, celebrated this agreement with the IMF as a sign for sound and good uh, economic policies. But in fact, it means that um, many of the um, public employees are already uh, now losing their, uh, their workplace, their job, also in um, crucial sectors like the health sector. And um, it will probably mean other... Um, neoliberal kind of reforms in future. Um, Four billion seems to be a lot, but it's over several years. And um, it is uh, not by now really uh, clear what are the um, the implications of that, um, what uh, the Moreno government had to agree in order to be able to sign this agreement. And there's still um, discussions going on about uh, whether or not, or I would say, of course, it has to, uh, be um, um, ratified by the Ecuadorian parliament. 
So now, as I mentioned in the introduction last Sunday, there were local elections in Ecuador and a few results have been announced. What do you think do the preliminary results suggest about how Moreno's uh, policy direction is being received among Ecuadorians? Yeah, I think uh, one thing uh, that has become clear is that Alianza País, the um, party of Moreno and uh, formerly the party of um, um, Rafael Correa, does not play any important role anymore as an electoral force. So um, while during the 10 years of the um, Korea presidency, Alianza País um, was the most important and uh, strongest political party, and now it's not uh, very important anymore. And um, so the political capital of Moreno is uh, very low at this moment. However, this does not mean that uh, there is a clear shift to the left. Rather, we can see that there are there are good results for the um, traditional right-wing party, the Christian um, Social Party, but also good results for the supporters of Korea. For example, a candidate of Korea won um, the um, prefecture, the regional elections in um, Pechincha, uh, Paula Pavon, and uh, Leonardo Orlando, also a candidate of, Co of Korea, won the elections in Manabi, um, which is, of course, um, the uh, province where the earthquake happened in 2016 and a stronghold of Korea supporters. Now, and, um, yeah. now foreign policy wise, there also seems to be a rightward shift. As I mentioned in the introduction last uh, week, Moreno officially declared that Ecuador is leaving UNASUR, the Union of South American uh, nations, which uh, you know was created under President Hugo Chavez, but which uh, and which has its headquarters in in Quito, and uh, it was mostly created by progressive governments, but several conservative governments at the time participated, such as Chile and and Colombia. Now they're creating ProSur, a new alliance that claims to be non-ideological, but excludes Venezuela and so far includes only conservative governments. It seems so. Moreno is playing along in all of this. Is there any way he can still claim to? be uh, somehow a progressive or center-left, or is he openly joining Ecuador's political right? I mean, what is his economic and political base at the moment, now that he's split Korea's party, Alianza País? Um, I think that it's uh, he's clearly a right-wing politician, and he's doing some things that um, a right-wing politician or a traditional right-wing politician would probably not have been able to do um, in terms of uh, dismantling the institutions uh, that have been created during the citizens' revolution. Um, he had some support, or I would even say important support of social movements in the beginning, and he capitalized also some of the conflicts that Korea has had with social movements in order to get their support in the beginning, but in order to um, actually uh, then move to the right. So um, I think there's um, not anything left of um, well, a left-wing um, government now. It's, um, yeah. Um, well, we're going to have to leave it there for now, though. Um, hopefully we'll come back to you again as the, as the situation changes and develops in Ecuador. Uh, I was speaking to Tim Schützhoff, a political scientist and Ecuador specialist based in Kassel, Germany. Thanks again, Tim, yeah. for having joined us today. Yeah. Many thanks. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.